What's going on, family? Y'all see who we are, man. But all this lusciousness, again, you can't find what you're looking for here. Okay. You know, you're not trying to spend any money. Hey, guys, got something for you? <laughs> Think you're gonna like it. Hello. Here we are We're again. We're back, baby. We're back. Welcome back. This thing is clean. So, how do I start? Oh, okay. Here's a good way to start. <laughs> we sell a lot of trucks here. All kinds of trucks. Semi-trucks. Regular light-duty pickup trucks. Sort of heavier-duty pickup trucks. Service trucks. All kinds of trucks. But... Honestly, we've had a little bit of a shortage of performance trucks, and Ooh. this is a pretty good way to start. And, you know, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, a modern pickup truck's probably faster than this, like just a standard one, but that's not really the point. Right. The point is, is this, back in the day, was pretty quick for a pickup truck. Hey, you're is, talking the heritages of all those guys that started, that this is what came before. For sure, and I think it's extremely important to know about why things like this exist, and why yeah that's it. <laughs> why they exist and where they, it really came from because it all started with dodge because dodge is always the starter that's of right. the muscle that's with right the dodge little red express that's remember right that yes i remember so that. that came out in the emissions emissions era um you could really couldn't get any kind of good uh well breathing v8s and anything performance yeah that's when everything started getting bogged down i mean even yeah. your biggest performance cars had a down year, Camaro, the, all the gym they performance, were just slow. everything went down. And that was pre-SAE. Yep. So those ratings of like 170, 180 horsepower yeah. were still too high. They were probably yeah. barely making 130 yeah. with God. accessories. They were just super low compression. It was low compression, depression. I remember that. We'll put it that, that way. I remember so that. So what happened was Dodge had an idea. There was one way to get performance in a two-door package back to people and that was to take their lightest duty truck and right, put a big motor in and it. put their biggest engine in it yeah. and like they're like you know their 25 or 3500 like sized engines yeah and fit that in this because guess what trucks don't have the same emissions regulations as cars so nope. they were able to get their 440 cubic inch uh magnum v8 into the dodge little red express and that's when that started because that was Really one of the few ways to get accessible power right. from the factory anymore. Right. And this is kind of the spiritual successor to that kind of ethos. Take your Chevy's biggest answer. Take your <laughs> it's like two decades later nearly. Right. Um, but uh, the biggest much, motor, the four fifty four. Four fifty four, that was in there, I think their their twenty five hundred and thirty five hundred series trucks. Yep, and they're in a few cars. Impala's had yeah. them. 
I think you could even get a bigger engine later down the line with like the Vortex series. Yep. I think it was even an 8.4 liter Vortex. 8.4 liter in the trucks. I think that's like a 400 and uh, 400 like 68 or 470 cubic inch V8. That's a big, yeah. big engine. Yeah, it was a Huge. torque monster because it was naturally aspirated. Exactly. It was so a big, big boy. Even in this truck, little over 200 horsepower, that's not really the important figure. This is making 405 pound feet of torque. You got to think about it for its day also. Yeah. Yeah. What year is this truck? 1992. Got to think about what were the power numbers in 1992, right? They were getting up there again, and sports cars were becoming yep. better. But as far as American sports cars, there was still a huge lack of power. Right. Um, but a lot of companies were starting to substitute for that stuff. American Auto Crossing was becoming a thing because, hey, we can't make the cars fast. Might as well make them handle better. Right. So right. A lot of company, and that's also where you get the start of companies like Saline. Yeah. Um, because the the cars from a stock standpoint just weren't cutting it. So. Yeah. So they came in, brought their package in, added mm -hmm. a little bit more performance. Their touch. Right. Um, so, they took a platform that was already pretty decent, and made it better. Exactly. So that's kind of the ethos here. Is you know you could still get this is the last big block V8 truck as far as performance truck that you could get. Yeah. That this is it. This is the last big block. That's because, a big block. <laughs> yeah, because everything else after that, I mean, you, what, what could you get? I think, I think technically speaking, it's not even a big block. Is and, and big block is not is not determined by size. It is de determined by the cylinder wall spacing. It has nothing to do 454. with 454. I thought the 454 was. The, it is a big block. It is a big block. But, but just because something is big doesn't make it a big block. No, it's the cylinder For wall example, side. It's the, the gapping between the, the cylinder walls. Because yes. back in the day, they didn't have any way to dissipate any of the heat in Correct. those iron block engines. So it was all about how thick the walls were because that's how hard you could push the engine yes. and get it hot, like super hot. So that being said, the last successor to this, as far as naturally aspirated biggest engine you can fit, kind of ethos is the Dodge Dakota RT with the 5.9 Magnum engine. Oh, I forgot about that. That is like the Dakota, only... The Dakota was nice. Yeah. That, that was thing the only, was nice. <laughs> that was the only one to come after this. And um, Dodge and Dakota was, had the stripe too. And that wasn't even a Dodge the engine. That was an AMC 360 V8 that Dodge took from AMC. See, I didn't know that. That's, yeah. Yeah. I, I had All no idea. All of Chrysler's best engines didn't come from Chrysler. That's just a <laughs> Just saying. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> Just saying. I accept the Hellcat. That's that's Chrysler yeah. engine, but uh, this thing is gorgeous, and it's in pretty good shape. A lot of these are not in good shape. A lot. Yeah. Um. So it's a three-speed automatic, which you're probably thinking, oh, oh, god. But I hit, I no, hit the gas. That's actually pretty good for these cars. I hit the gas at 40 miles an hour. This thing is quicker than you think. Yeah. But it's all about getting that like mid-range acceleration yeah. because if you're you're not going to be impressing anybody from a you know light to light situation with this truck, <laughs> but it's just so cool. It's those it's who so see it who know it good. are going to appreciate it. And it just also needs to be said too, just because we got some shit talkers. A lot of people are like, "Oh, those are not original." These stickers, I think, came on a later year truck. Yeah, but they were put on this. I don't think they came on the '92. Okay, but it fits. I it mean, fits. It, it works. It it's looks a 454. Good. It's the same damn thing. Yeah, still got the same motor in it. Once again, semantics with some of these guys. Uh, you like... know, we got some purists, and I respect them. <laughs> um, however, it works, right? And it is. These little mirrors always used to baffle the crap out of me, <laughs> yeah. right? They are pretty small now that I. That they I'm always baffle the crap out of me. I know yeah. they came off a car, and I can't remember which one, mm -hmm. but they always baffle me. But this thing is Sheesh! in great shape inside and out. I mean, the interior is great. It's in super good shape. This thing is clean, clean. It smells good in here, too, man. This is nice. Oh, yeah, she's nice. She's real nice. <laughs> These seats are incredible, man. Those little humps are not flattened at all. No, not at all. How many miles are on it? Oh, it's low, man. I can tell you right now because we are, this is an old school car, so I can actually look inside and see how many miles are on it. That's right. It's, it's not digitized. It's 32,800. Jeez. Oh, my God. It's Dual just, exhaust. Got I pipes. drove this thing uh, on uh, yesterday, and I loved it. I thought it was just awesome. Like it's not fast by modern standards at all, but it's quick enough to like surprise you. And the vibe of the truck is so cool that it just doesn't even matter to me at all. Like this is, I like the top too, that fiberglass. It almost looked like it's. And I believe it's also, this is nice. 
if I remember correctly, it, it is lift also, up. Yes. Does this? Yes, this comes down first. Oh, nice. There you go. Oh, well, that's something that'll have to be adjusted. Yeah. <laughs> but there you go. It happens. They don't last forever. Yeah. But it's a clean bed. And it's too. clean in back here. Super nice Super back here. Clean. Yeah. It's got a couple stains, but it's like clean. clean. God, look at this thing, man. You, you really. You can't go wrong. No. This is nice. Yeah. This is a clean truck. These trucks just, they don't exist like in this good of condition anymore. And a lot of them have miles. A lot. A lot of them have a lot of miles. I don't know that, but the you find them, they're so rusty. Reliable. It's like the most simple engine of all time. It doesn't really get much simpler than a 454 Chevrolet <laughs> engine. Oh my goodness! And let's go. I ahead. had those tips on my uh, my Yukon. Oh yeah, those exact tips on my <laughs> Yukon back in the day. Let's take a look at uh, what's powering this Bohemoth. truck. Behemoth. Oh boy! Here we go. Am I just being a baby? No, it's right there. <laughs> okay, so this Down is the, this is the interesting thing about a lot of older cars, and this Down seems and to be sad. Just because they go up, sometimes you have to push them down a little yep, bit. Yep, you got to go down and go it, up. And then, yeah. there it is. Down and up. And it needs to be said, oh, there are wow. some modern cars that don't have self-lifting hoods, which is a shame. That's true. This is a 1992 truck, and it's got something to hold the hood up. When Spring load it. Yep. This thing is clean, man. Yeah, I mean, you got your your God. little wear and tear, your usual stuff for this kind Come of Oh, man, for this year, this is clean. It's very clean. And it runs good. I mean, it runs like a regular service pickup truck. And that's the funny thing about this. It's like, you know, it's making 200-something horsepower and 400 torque. It's the most unstressed power of all time. So there's probably a considerable considerable amount of things you can do with oh, yeah. this to get it oh, a lot absolutely. faster. Absolutely. So. This motor is used for so many different things. And God, how many people race with a, a 454? Come on, man. Mm -hmm. They're able to get crazy power, power enough to get the front tires off the ground. Mm -hmm. so. And I believe it's powered by a turbo hydromatic 400, so a TH400. Yeah. It's like the most yeah, that's, drag trains yeah. of all time. Yeah. 373 gearing from the factory on this one. And that's the other thing that's nice about trucks, too, is they have such aggressive gearing. So they're, it's kind of the perfect recipe for yeah. like putting a big engine in it if you're making a performance truck. So, um, so yeah. about the one guy that was in my neighborhood, man. He built mm -hmm. race tr trucks all the time. He loved his trucks, and he used Cadillac motors. All mm -hmm. He loved, for some reason, loved the North Star motor. And, um, but he raced in trucks only. The later ones are great. The, yeah. the later North Stars, there's a seems to be a bit of a stigma um, with North Stars, and the early ones do have the reputation yep. for a reason. Head gaskets and head bolts, yeah. um, big ones. But he's to be said the later ones are actually really solid. And I just saw somebody did a rear-mounted twin turbo on an STSV, and those came. That was the first V car ever from Cadillac. And it has a North Star in it. And the factory supercharged North Star. And I think it's making something like 700 plus wheel horsepower. Rear mounted? Yeah. Yes, rear turbo. bumper mounted turbos wow. near the exhaust. Wow. And it's a, so it's a twin charge. So they're, yeah. they're actually running the stock blower too with the twin turbos. <laughs> so. Um, I like the STSs. I like the STSVs. Mm -hmm. For some reason it was. I could totally see us getting one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was, uh, it was, in my opinion, it was the answer to the M5, right? It was that, yeah, that size. Not quite enough of an example. Well, not, not to race it. Right, yeah. right. No, yeah. but it was that car that was around that same class We for had me. nothing to compete in that class. No. Nothing at all. And that oh, was at least yeah. the start. Um, and things got even better with the, the technically the V1 generation. Which, right. Um, it's pretty cool. I really like those too. So this thing clean, man. This is it is an super, overall super really clean. clean truck. Yep. Show the inside real quick again. Go for it. I tell you, this that's the one thing that always catches my attention with these trucks for those little bitty mirrors. Yeah. Just I did never <laughs> understood it. Maybe it was aerodynamics. Yeah, I don't know. maybe it probably was. This was the nineties after all. And <laughs> people were obsessed. Oh, it's with solid that. in here too. Oh yeah. It's like solid. everything sounds different now. Oh mm -hmm. my God. I hope you guys can hear the difference in the sound. Everything changed. It's solid in here. Yeah, 
It's a nice car. Super, super clean, guys. Super, super clean. <laughs> I Pop remember out cup that, holders. <laughs> that right there is oh, half of that mm -hmm. was like a ten thousand dollar option in Lamborghini. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they got some cool stuff. Look at this, man. It's got tape deck with auto reverse. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Look at the equalizer. And the AM FM stereo. AM FM stereo. I don't know what these MSRP for. I don't know what the MSRP was on these trucks. Um but back then, it was just more reasonable to, you know, for certain performance cars. But oftentimes not. But for more American cars, it usually was pretty decently priced. Unless it was the C4ZR1. That thing was double the price of a normal Corvette. God, it, just, it, it feels so familiar because I rode in a lot of, a lot of these this generation trucks mm -hmm. and SUVs. And it's all the same. God, I remember this just too well, man. <laughs> it brings back memories. This, this, all of this, this dash, just these seats, the steering wheel. This is just memories for me. Mm -hmm. The hazard. God, look at this. The hazard button. <laughs> look, guys, we got a third pedal. What's that for? Um, that is the parking brake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the tokyo drift pedal <laughs> the only thing is the only thing is missing for me with that nostalgic feeling is the button on the floor for the head the high beams on the older cars that had those i think that was probably more in the late 80s i mean early 80s late 70s cars. yeah that seems like a 70s leftover mm -hmm. technology that's probably early 80s um this thing got four cup holders guys so you know it's American. Cup holders. No one did it better than this the Americans. This is nice, man. This thing is so clean. So, so clean. I love it. It's a nice truck. It is, man. It really is. So this truck, this truck specifically is great, but we got to talk about the historical context. See, this yeah. truck has one problem. What was the problem? Company infighting. That's uh, that's the problem. I technically think this truck may have done better than the truck I'm about to mention, but this truck technically had a problem. It had a 7.4 liter V8 and a three-speed automatic transmission, and it was slower than the turbo V6 GMC Cyclone. That's a good point. That's a very good point. And that is kind of the point is boost overcomes displacement it right. just does and absolutely that's, that's a fact that we learned today Four so stairs. as cool as this truck is and as much as i love this truck the car that has taken over the 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 history books from this era for performance trucks alongside this for sure i think people definitely do remember these and these are actually very sought people remember after. them absolutely so are the cyclones and it's because they were such a, ga a game changer. All-wheel drive, were. turbocharged V6. The Cyclone was a monster. I still know people exactly. that want them and want to oh, drive yeah. them right now. Right. So, like I said, boost overcomes displacement. Yes. So we should probably move on to the next truck that included both of those philosophies, displacement and boost. Sound like a plan. The next generation of performance trucks. Let's get it. So, welcome to the 
t 10 years actually, a full decade after the uh, Chevy was made, we have this thing is so the modern interpretation of a performance truck. She's beautiful. Yes. It's clean. Like, this super, color super clean. is amazing. I love this color. Um, that's pretty much my number one. Uh, we have another white one, which is in really great shape. It's got 149,000 miles, though, but it's in, I'm going to censor myself, freaking nice condition. <laughs> really, really, really nice shape. So I had a, uh, I had a 98 Ford F-150. Okay. And because of lightning, I had those headlights. I had that bumper. I had those taillights up from this truck. Mm -hmm. I, lightning was one of my favorite trucks. Mm -hmm. I had those lights. I put those lights on that car, and it, I think it looked amazing oh, on yeah. my F-150. For sure. Actually, you know, you know what's kind of funny? There is a Gen 1 Lightning. And it would have rivaled that truck right there. And I think it was Ford's, one of Ford's biggest gas ranges. Not their biggest, but it was one of their biggest gas ranges. I think it was a, a 5.8 liter naturally aspirated engine. 5.8? I, th I think it was a 5.8. I could be completely wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's a 5.8. Yeah, I'm, I'm not even familiar with it, to be honest with you. Google it while you take a walk around this. Or there I will go. Google it while you take a walk around <laughs> She's pretty. Man, this thing is nice. Side of the exhaust. The stance is really, really cool. It's got side skirts. Huh. Sorry. I'm just finding out now. It is a 5.8 liter V8. 5.8. If I was guessing, I'd have said 5.4 because that was the biggest one that I remember with four. That's actually what this has. Yeah, this, this has, has a 5.4, huh? A 5.4 liter three valve that was breathed on by SVT, and they added a supercharger. So it's far from just a supercharger on a 5.4. Yeah. Um, and this is a great engine. I mean, they take a lot of power. I had the 4.7 in my truck. Okay. And at one point, I was I had a problem with my truck, so I thought about swapping so it out Dodge? for the... Huh? You had a Dodge? Ford. Oh, 4.6 then. 4.6, not 4.7. Yeah, 4.7 yeah. is that weird Chrysler God, engine. <laughs> no, 4.6. Yeah, yeah. And I had problems with it. And at one point, I just liked the truck. So I had a, I had a vehicle that I, it was a, uh, my Yukon. Yeah. GMC Yukon got stolen. And when they stole the Yukon, man. I don't know how that's going to get picked up. It, we are fine. These are nose cancer. Okay, that's good. So I didn't. At one point, I didn't want anything else nice because I didn't want something that somebody else wanted more than I did. So when right, they right. stole it, I just got a basic old truck that got the job done. But right, right. once I started driving it, it rolled so nice. It rolled better than my Yukon that I wanted to keep the truck and end up changing the motor just to another. I should have went with the 5.4. I went with another 4.7. It still rolled four, great. Six. Four six. <laughs> four six. It still rolled absolutely great. Yeah. And um I really appreciated my Ford truck. I'm gonna be honest with you. Yeah. I love that truck. Mm -hmm. had, that thing was nice. It wasn't pretty, mm -hmm. but I loved it. And well, you know, hit a patch of ice and tear it up. Gotta go to something else. <laughs> yeah. Especially Damn. up here with the rear wheel drive. This thing is just so clean, man. It's a really nice truck. I still like and, it. Yeah. I still like Ford trucks. Mm -hmm. And look, they got big mirrors. Ooh, these seats are beautiful. Open it up. Man. Other oh, side. It's, Let's go to the other side. I got the keys. Oh, you got it. Go ahead. See? Wonderful having the keys. So some of the things that I like, like this contouring in the body, mm -hmm. that's thought at. That's, that's super 90s. You, you it can't, bled into the 2000s, yes. but it was like late 90s, early 2000s. The, the bodies of these trucks got real curvy yes. for, for no reason. <laughs> but it was a good touch. It was a yeah. really, really nice touch. Yeah. Leather on the, on the door. Leather, interestingly, the leather and plastic combination, you got to love that. Leather these and suede. Are in ridiculous shape because apparently Gosh. these bolsters go immediately. That's what I'm looking at. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're holding up really, really nice. Mm hmm. That dash, that is so forward. <laughs> My God, this generation Ford just all of them had this. Yeah, so what you're really paying for with this truck is the powertrain. That's, That's it. really it. 
that's, that, it. that's more or less what it's about, too. It's the paint is soft, too, by the way, guys. Mm -hmm. Super soft. Yeah. She's she's pretty. Very, very pretty truck. Yeah, I love these tail lights. I love the lights. To me, they just made it pop. Mm -hmm. And on this blue, it just hits different. Yeah, I think it's like when I think of a lightning, it's gotta be like a bright color. Yeah. And I think this blue is like an excellent I would agree. Excellent representation of what I would this agree. truck's about. I like the white one we have too, honestly. Yeah. I was about to say white is another good color for the mm -hmm. lightning. Exactly. I think it was a uh, yellow also was a good color mm -hmm. for the lightning. Yeah, but this I haven't thing. seen a lightning in yellow. Yeah. Never seen one. Yeah. That's crazy. Sheesh. God, this thing don't look like it towed anything. It's clean. It's clean. <laughs> it's super clean. I think it's, I, I, you know what? I just don't want to be wrong. I'll double check. This has a digital gauge, so we can't just peep in. Yeah, it is. it's got the, the keypad on the side. I don't know if you guys know about that. This keypad allows you to do a lot of stuff. Everything from open the door to roll the windows up or down. It does a lot of really cool stuff. 40,162 miles. What That's year it. is this one? Uh, 04. This is so nice. That's just like it's nice. I think around that time, in 04... There was an answer to this truck, and it came from Dodge, the original people who made the first performance truck, the SRT 10 Ram. Yeah. 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 That was the answer to this truck. But yeah. a lot of people theorized, even though the Ram SRT 10 was technically the fastest because it had the highest top speed, and still, to this day, crazy enough, the SRT 10 Ram still has the highest top speed ever for a pickup truck. I thought because the Cobra truck came and got it. No, it didn't? because they're all speed rated because of tires. And Dodge was the only people crazy enough to not have a speed limiter on their truck and put a Viper engine in a Ram. <laughs> that V10 motor is a monster, though. <laughs> yeah, That's it a is. Monster, and, and then the two doors, you could get a manual. The four-door Rams were all automatic. And, and so these... far, everybody that I ran across, I ran across a guy at the Munster car show last year. Mm -hmm. And that Munster show is coming up again, not this weekend, next weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, We'll be there. Uh, and he had a Cobra truck. Not Cobra truck. He had the V10 Viper truck. Mm -hmm. He had a lot of miles on that truck. And that's one thing I learned about that car. It actually you can put some miles on it. Mm -hmm. It still does what it's supposed to For do. For sure. You get absolutely egregious gas mileage. Yeah, it's, it's going to suck. It's so you, bad. You're not buying it for that. Oh, for sure. <laughs> but, like, if you, if you get an SRT10 Ram, you're expecting literally, like, listen, we're okay with, No, it's like, single digits. It's like four. Yeah, it's I've real. It. It's crazy. It's like single four digits. miles a gallon. Yeah, because the Viper doesn't do great on gas, but when you add, what I don't know, fifteen hundred pounds on oh, top of yeah. that, yeah, yeah it's, it gets it gets, you know, considerably and worse. Remember what I said about trucks? They get a crazy aggressive yeah. rear gearing. So yeah. think about what that does to gas mileage yeah. too, with like a fucking eight point three liter V ten. You got to think, even even that truck to be to put it in consideration isn't designed to work as a truck right so the v yeah. when it, that viper wasn't designed to be a truck truck yeah um this lightning wasn't designed to be a truck truck but a it, lot of people use them as truck people trucks. use them as truck trucks especially that yeah. thing they use them as truck trucks yeah so that's why there's not a whole lot left yeah in like this kind of condition yeah they're still out there there's quite a few still out there, but like nice, nice ones, no, pretty much gone. Yeah, because you got to think. All right, so it's cool to make a fast truck and all, but what was the main demographic of people buying trucks? They're using them to use them as trucks. Yeah, you got to realize I come from the south. Right. I'm from Louisiana, where trucks were everywhere. Yeah. Lived in Texas for a while, where trucks were everywhere. Mm -hmm. They used them. Yeah. They they were the people daily drivers. Mm -hmm. But that's the thing about this truck with the SRT10 Ram. The difference. Yeah. This was technically quicker wow it was lighter too that's the that's yeah, the way it was the lighter srt 10 ram is a heavy truck. It's a big truck all dodges dodge dodge has the heaviest truck out dodge of all has of them. the heaviest heavy yeah all the heavies all the heavies heavy. <laughs> <laughs> the heaviest heavies <laughs> dodge truck has always been the heaviest and always had the worst gas mileage <laughs> My and dad wanted to dodge, and it's it, a good reason for that. Stuff. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's because it's barn door engineering most yeah. of the time, and yeah. it's usually old technology, yeah. which is steel and heavy yep. chassis. Yep. 
And I mean, they last and they can do a lot of towing. And it's yeah. the reason why, because they put so much beef in it. Mm -hmm. That beef is heavy. Yeah. My dad wanted one so bad. And the thing that deterred him was the gas mileage. Right, right. He just couldn't, he could not. Have Later. a good one, man. Be safe. Yeah, he just couldn't stomach the gas mileage. Mm -hmm. So It's bad. It's bad. <sighs> these are cool. Because are really cool. this thing is so pretty. I think bro. this is the first factory supercharged truck ever. Ever, ever. I don't think anything. It's not the first it's truck so with pretty. forced induction because there is such a thing as the Cyclone, like right. we mentioned. Right. But that was a cyberpunk twin, tur or I think it was a single turbo, single turbo boost loading. Yeah. All wheel drive, yeah, yeah. Truck that didn't sell well, yeah, because it was too expensive. Yeah, I don't know how these fared. Honestly, I don't really know the history on these that much, and quite frankly, I'm still learning a lot about this stuff. Yeah, but what I can say is this is an iconic vehicle because Very much number so. one, it was the Paul Walker truck in the first Fast. That's series. right. Yeah, and this was red, but this was. It got some notoriety. A lot of the cars that were in that film got a ton of notoriety. But, I mean, even even before that, mm -hmm. Lightning carried a meaning. You oh, know, to have sure. a, anything, Lightning was huge. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, for absolutely. Lightning, is serious. So, mm -hmm. um, a Lightning truck, for me, you know, to me, it made sense to see Paul Walker with the Ford Lightning. Uh -huh. the Lightning truck, because it was like, okay, Fast and Furious, it is a fast truck. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It made sense. It was, right. it right. made sense. Jeez, this thing is so nice. Like almost, almost my comments on this truck are almost exclusive to the color because I just love the color. Yeah, I don't. The think color's I'm... blowing my mind, especially in these lights. It really pops. Mm -hmm. It's exactly. rich. I don't it's know what deep. it was. I don't know what it was about the early two thousands and like car companies with like the clear tails and the clear headlights. Yeah. Because they, it looks super bling era. It's super, super bling. I loved it back like, then. That's kind of why I like the E46 M3. Have you seen uh, the taillights yeah, on those? Yeah, it looks yeah. bling era as hell. Why you think I love the Z06 yeah, taillights? Yeah. I will never change them because they're clear. My taillights kind of look bling era on my yeah. car, but we, we won't get into that. <laughs> More to come. <laughs> so, yeah, these are awesome. And um, that's almost all I have to say because it's like... Let's pop the hood real quick. Okay, yeah. That is actually a good idea. <laughs> uh, that one's easier to open than that one. That one you have yeah, to... Yeah, the Ford, the Ford uh, yeah, oh, uh, yeah, Ford is always easier. look at easier. that. You don't have to do the nope. whole push down. It's right there. It's right there. It's right there. It actually is trying to this come up. This thing is in there. Wow, I got packed in there. It's in there. In there is an understatement. This oh, thing yeah. is stuffed. It took a shoehorn. It took some <laughs> grease. It's tucked. Not a lot of space to play under this hood. I think I do remember that about my Ford. It was just tucked. And that's Even for Ford, that small motor, it was tucked. That's because Ford was going overhead cam, and they didn't really have the, you know, the technology or less... <laughs> the experience giving trucks the space to go to overhead cam and because overhead cam adds a ton of complexity and width to an engine. Um, so it's tight in there for sure. And one thing I, I remember about Chevy for me was it was almost like you could sit under there and work on it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With this, you, I, I know I remember not being able to. And another thing I'm noticing now when I look at it, mm -hmm. you look at that line, mm -hmm. that motor sits behind the, the front axle. It's partially, yeah. It does. It's, Most it, of it does. Yeah. The bigger part of it does. This so is, if you look at that valve cover, look at the center yeah, line yeah. of that, mm -hmm. it's almost perfect. It's almost sitting on yeah. it. It's almost sitting on it. So yeah. that was actually smart for them because they put, they level, they try to equal out some of the weight because it's so light in the back. Mm -hmm. Throwing that behind it allows this thing to corner a little bit better. And it still better. handles like a truck. I mean, let's it's be a truck. honest. It's that a suspension truck. is That's not, right. come on, man. It's soft. This pup over there was like, boom, 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 you know? <laughs> And that's just yeah. from driving on this smooth floor. So this <laughs> right. thing is, uh, God, it's nice though, man. Yeah. So these trucks, I think, were built from 99 to 04. Yeah. I could be wrong. I think 99 to 04. I think that's kind of when it started. Yep. Um, and Ford never followed it up. And yeah. people are pretty pissed off about what the new Lightning is. Yeah. The new Lightning is an electric truck. Yes. Marketing genius. Yes. Because Lightning is synonymous with electricity. You know, yes, exactly. <laughs> so 
I think that was the right move for them. Oh, that or Zeus. Yeah. <laughs> people are just mad. But look, at the end of the day, marketing's marketing. This it's is, it's all about, but you know, it's all like you said, it's all about marketing, mm -hmm. right? And right now we're in this big EV age where that is taking over. Does it it makes sense? Uh, let's think about this. Even some of the marketing that Dodge has done with some of Dodge has done with the new cars and Ford. Mm -hmm. I learned to drive in a Maverick. Right, right. And the Maverick was not a truck. Yes. Maverick was a car, right? So the names evolve because it's invocative of something. Thank you. The, the only issue is if something is invocative of something else and it has nothing to do yeah. with that other product. Hornet. For example, the Hornet. <laughs> the Hornet. The Dodge Hornet. Mustang, Mach E. Mach E. Here's the thing. That is also marketing genius. It's a very the big Ford, time marketing genius. Ford does genius. not have sexy names in their catalog. So they really they don't. Had, they had to pull something out to compete with Teslas. I mean, come on. So this is. And I know true. people that they would not drive it. They'll drive a Mach E before they drive a Tesla. So mm -hmm. I think it's a, it's a nice looking car. Funny enough, though, I think the Mach E. But the Tesla might be more American-made than a Mach. It is. <laughs> Just saying. Hot take. Uh, I think it is. Oh, my so, God. So, yeah, as far as I'm aware, these were only equipped with automatic transmissions. I don't think they ever got the manual treatment, which is a bit of a shame. But um, I think you're right. But, I don't remember you know, ever seeing these again, manual. Here we go with marketing. As I just said, uh, you know, you're, you're appealing to a wider audience with just having the automatic transmission. I had these gauges. Yeah. Yeah. I had white gauges in the car. Mm -hmm. I loved the Lightning back then. And when I got into my Ford, I really fell in. I really got into it. And it was just, wow. It was, it was a pretty cool truck. Oh, God. It's just all the same. And it wants to go. God. If nothing says childhood to me, like green ambient lighting oh, on like a, a, a oh, kind of cluster, everything, <laughs> everything I grew up in was some clap <sighs> van with green lighting on the cluster. So my new car now has green lighting on the cluster at night. So, but yeah. Another thing that, that I'm looking at right now that just, I forgot all about, right. Was, um, uh, a few of those things that just. Right now, they hit me the, the nostalgic feeling. Mm -hmm. Overdrive was a button. Yeah. Well, it's automatically on. You can turn it off, though. Overdrive was a button. You turn it. Oh, yeah. You, you click overdrive off so you can have that performance side of the house. Mm -hmm. You click it off. It, you hit, it goes up in gear. <laughs> yep. Another thing. Yep. As opposed to seats having the sensors that let you know if somebody's sitting next to you. Yeah. It was a key that turned off the passenger airbag. Yep, that's some old school shit. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> and now it's got uh, because of the door. Seat belt. Seat belt door. Cup holder. I think the Chevy has that one beat. Yeah, and twelve volt, two twelve volts. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> this thing is super clean, guys. Oh, what was that? Oh boy, what is the registration? This? Oh, can't show that. Oh, uh, wow, wow, wow. Glasses, eyeglass holder. That's crazy. Yeah, we don't. They don't need to see who owned it last. Look at the Carfax. Supercharger. Oh my god. <laughs> whoop, whoop. Pedal feels really good too. Did you take this one out yet? Next the week. Pedal feels really good. I think this might this might be might be a real happy drive for you. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I can't wait. I had fun with 250 ah, horsepower. This is like this. 380 something. And it's underrated for sure because that was the the deal with Ford. At the yeah, time. they always underrating did that. everything. So a lot of people will say that this engine is associated with the Ford GT engine, and yeah. it is. But the difference is the Ford GT engine was the only 5.4 uh, supercharged engine in the family. Correct me if I'm wrong. To have a four valve head, this still retained a three valve head. I have no idea. So I think that was the only one. Um, I think even the Shelby's. 
in 2007 still had a three valve head. I could be wrong about that though. I think I might. I think I am wrong about this thing. This thing is pretty, man. So um, pretty car, pretty car. And now we have gargantuan, ridiculous aftermarket options for performance trucks. Yes. And really, the only people that are still carrying the torch um, outside of EV trucks is uh, Dodge with the uh, Ram TRX. Yeah. And a little birdie told yeah. me that we might have one coming. Oh my God, guys. Oh. I cannot wait. <laughs> and a little birdie so you also guys see that. told me that it might be breathed on by a small company. Don't say nothing. <laughs> wait till you see that, guys. I, I want y'all to be surprised by that one. Uh, again, ever interested in any of these vehicles, man, the, the number is below. The number is right there on the screen. Give them a call. Go to the website. Take a look at it, look at the details. You can't go wrong, semi anyone. You can't go wrong. And if you look at it, look at the trucks. We just showed you two trucks that come from two different generations with performance heritage or background, kind of leading the way for us with performance trucks. And then we got some of the other trucks back here, guys. Humvees, SUVs, work trucks, heavy duty trucks. They're here, man. Come on, man. Listen, bro. We are at Illinois Motors. They do not do the norm over here, guys. Oh, sir. Why is that, man? Because listen, just like you guys, they were designed for greatness. Guys, because we were designed for greatness, you have the right, the responsibility, the authority to never, ever, ever be average. So, guys, don't be average. Yeah.